Hi everyone, welcome to Drag Amount. I'm Tom. I'm your host for today. Drag Amount, of course, is sponsored by Tor Books, as well as all of the lovely people who support us over on Patreon. I got a chance to interview Michael Livingston way back in April of 2022 at JordanCon, and it was just, it was a great time. He's a really cool dude, he's very chill. He has an amazing mustache, I mean, <laughs> I must say. But also, he went deep into how he got this job to write this book, The Origins of Robert Jordan's The Wheel of Time. He gave us a look into some of the really interesting little tidbits that he got to dive into while researching for this book. He read into some of Robert Jordan's private correspondence with his editors from the past, as well as some of his own personal notes on things that he was able to expand on in this latest volume. Come join me and we'll go check it out now. Huzzah. Huzzah, okay. So, first of all, you know, we're at Jordan Con, so, yes. you, and yesterday's panel was amazing. Uh, yeah. I believe there was a standing ovation that was had at, toward yeah, the end. Yeah. I wasn't ready for that either. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, you know, Maria told me, Maria said, thank God she was up there. Uh, and I told her, look, there's a lot of people here, and I might need to lean over. Like, like <laughs> save me. And, and she was great, but she told me afterwards, um, she was like, I don't really remember a reaction like that. So uh, that helped raise my, uh, my beats per minute even more <laughs> and my nervousness already. Uh, it, was, it was amazing. It was really incredible to have that kind of response. And I mean, it felt emotionally gratifying. Like I've, I've been working with this material now and like just deep in it. And I know what it means to me, right? I know what I know what it means to me to be doing this book, and 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 throughout the process, I'm trying to sort of like hopefully get other people to feel what I feel, and and I, it felt like I think I think I'm going to get there. I yeah, think well, I'm going to get there. I mean, speaking for other people, uh, I did. So <laughs> you can speak for other people. Like that is true. And that's fair. Yeah. No, I mean, I I I I definitely I felt a kind of way and it was it was great. Oh, good. It was great. I I really uh I, I'm really excited. Thank you. For all right, let's start. How many people did you raffo? <laughs> like, I raffled a few people. <laughs> and ever since, so after that, I've had like just you know, people in the lobby, of course, you know. Like, oh yeah. Like, oh, tell me this. You off the record. Tell yeah. me this. Yeah, nothing's off the record. Nothing's yeah. off the record. Uh, Listen, but, with the Wheel of Time name on it, and then Amazon also is like ethereally attached to the Wheel of Time name too. Yeah. Nothing is off the record. Nothing's <laughs> off the record now. And it, it, it uh, yeah, I've had to raffle a lot of stuff. Yeah. And, and, I, and I have to be clear too, so the limitations of what I'm doing. This mm -hmm. is, I keep telling people it's, it's out world. Yeah. The, the companion is in world. The companion explains you know, the, the relationship between characters and things like that in a, in a inside. Like in a time. canonically story. Right. Yeah. I'm looking at where did Robert Jordan get this information yeah. from? What yeah. was he using to build it? And so I'm not going to have an answer to some questions that, um, that people are going to expect there to be an answer to because yeah. they want, you know, they want to know if this theory about this person's actions is correct. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, if there's a historical source or a mytholo mythological source, yeah, I'm going to have that. But otherwise, I'm, I'm not going yeah, to help you. Exactly. Canonically. Yeah. I, you know, I may have an opinion. Yeah, exactly. But uh, you, you said yesterday, so I had the fantastic opportunity to have a small couch con as well yesterday yes. with Michael. So, yes, uh, me. Yes, I did. It was for you. It was for you. I trapped him. I, I gleaned some information. I may bang him with some questions he wasn't expecting. No, I won't. Um, uh, uh, you said something that was interesting, which was, um, like, so we're, you're, you're telling things from, an out, like you said, an outward perspective where he pulled the information from, but you expand on the, 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 myth, the real world mythologies and historical draws. So, like, when you, knowing that, you know, X character is based off of X character, that, which comes from X story, yeah. now that you know what the story is that this character is based off of, if you go and look at that story, the real story, yeah. you could maybe glean what Robert Jordan was pulling from and maybe where he was going with it, even if it isn't canonically within the books. 
I would say yes. Okay. That is more or less correct. All right. I mean, we, we do have to understand, too, that, that the way that Jordan worked, he may have begun in one uh, mindset. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean he didn't move from that mindset. Yeah. So there are uh, there are things in the books that okay this began as X but it it became not X yeah and, and in many respects that's that's great oh it was yeah. it became what what we have and what mm -hmm. we all love um, so I so so we we also have to be careful about the predictive quality of this stuff just because he was inspired by something um, doesn't mean he was con contained by that yeah. and, and constrained by it so um, I try to sort of walk that line through the text. And and allow people, you know, if you if you want to use this to be predictive, you know, okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, but that's outside of the realm of, of what I am feeling authorized to say because the book is it's authorized. This, yeah. is, this is actually kind of Harriet said this is okay. <laughs> Maria said, like like this is this is authorized now, and so that makes me uh, you know very hesitant about about what I'm. It's not my business. To yes. Make a canon yeah. Of yeah. Time. No, you like, can't. Yeah. It's not my job. Yeah. Right? I mean, well, I mean, it kind of is now. You wrote that book. I mean, not uh, really. No, but not, no, not really. Pressure, man. No, I'm pressure. sorry. I'm sorry. But you, here, here's here's what I could do for you. Here's what I'm gonna do for you. I promise next year, uh -huh. I will have a stack of. Do you want ribbons or cards for Wafo, Rafo, and Mafo? Which is for everyone. Read and find out. Watch and find out. And then my personal favorite, which is. Maria and, find out. Maria and find out, yes. And so, because Maria is really like the Bible, right? For yeah. for 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 a lot of it. I mean, don't get me wrong, Harriet and the notes, which we'll talk about in a minute. But yeah. the the Maria, first of all, she's always at Jordan Con. Yeah. She's here every year. She loves it. She volunteered this year. And she's a saint. She really no. So, a quick side note, just because it's so cute, and I love Maria. Um, she she volunteered like the she went through the normal volunteer process. Like she signed up. She filled out the form, and then she was like, well, I got an email that said I had to go to the volunteer orientation. So that was when we were doing our interview with her. Shameless plug for our interview with Maria Simmons coming to the Dragon Mount YouTube soon. Um, uh, while we were doing that, she was like, I have to go to the volunteer orientation. Ebony's going to be there, and I have to, I have to make sure I understand everything, because she was doing, she volunteered in the charity auction. Oh, nice. For the Mayo, we, the charity that we do at Jordan Con is the Mayo Clinic, just for anyone else. Uh, and she helped, you know, take people's bids and things like that. But yeah, no, she's fantastic. Anyway, um, so back to the books. Uh, I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to ask you anything that's going to put you. That's going to make you uncomfortable. But uh, I'll anyway, just, I'll you know, just tell you. That I'm not going to answer. That's that. fair. No, no, you got to raffo me or mafo me. That's what it is. I like. I like those. Um, all right, to the, to the notes, to the notes. notes. So, I mean, we have a, a plethora of information. There's articles on Dragon Mount. There's other uh, content that we've created on YouTube and stuff talking about his notes and stuff. Also, on TikTok, Kitty does a, uh, like a series with Alan mm -hmm. where it's like stories from Alan. And, like, you know, he talks about the floppy disks you know that <laughs> did you have to did you have to find an eight and a half did, did you have to find like an apple two and like start to read some of the stuff or did they finally digitize it for <laughs> uh i everything i have is now digitized okay perfect <laughs> uh, which is a lot easier to deal with okay uh and especially because i mean you know if, if people don't know i mean the, the notes are are there's more words in the notes than in the books yeah there it's you. So just to remind everybody, what is it like? Three point six million in the in the te in the in the yeah. in the books. In so the that's books yeah. it's an astonishing amount of material. Yes, yeah. it's, it's not well organized. <laughs> um, it, was, it was probably for for Jim or for Robert him. Jordan. Yeah, it was probably yeah. organized for him. Yeah, I mean it's like you know it's like <laughs> but you office. can't get in that crawl in that brain. <laughs> right, I can't, you know it's like my office. Right, you know I know what that stack of papers is. Right, <laughs> don't move my stack of papers. I know. You, but without that, right, you're sort of half the job in the early going was just trying to get organization so that I can work through this material and actually analyze it properly. Uh, and it was a lot. And, and digitization was a huge part of that. And I was extremely grateful um, to the estate for for giving me free reign to do that. That's, um, that's awesome. You know, they, 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 didn't, they didn't have to do that. I mean, well. They could have said, no, you... You, you have to only do it with this stuff in this room. Yeah. 
Um, but they're like, whatever you need. I mean, it was the middle of COVID. Um, and everybody was like, just what can we do to make your life easier uh, from top to bottom? I mean, you know, tour, you know, I, I couldn't believe Tom Doherty, the, the person who founded tour. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, like, do you even have any questions for, for Tom? I'm like, <laughs> like, yeah. But, I mean, several. <laughs> yeah. But can I, can I talk to him? Like, and they're like, yeah. And I, here's his phone number. Like, <laughs> you know, just, just hit him whenever you need any, anything pops up, just hit him up. Like, what? <laughs> that's, really? that's so cool. That's the thing that I can there do. You like, now you can. Mm. Like, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. I have Tom Doherty's phone number. Yeah, right don't lose, don't lose your phone. What else can I ask him? You know, like, uh, um, so yeah, having, having a free recourse to, you know, to ask questions of, of Tom Doherty of, of, and of everybody, like, you know, his, uh, Robert Jordan's copy editor copy edited my book. Like, like every, we, we made sure that everybody who knew had any chance of knowing anything yeah. was involved. Uh, Thank, thank God, yeah. right? To make sure that I don't screw something up. <laughs> I doubt it. I Listen, I've read your other stuff, your and some of your academic stuff. Just because it's, <laughs> I went to uh, some of your some of your lectures at past Jordan Cons, and it was like honestly, a lot, I mean, like I'm not a historian, academic, but like I, this is very interesting. And then I thank picked you. up some stuff, so um, I'm sure you'll you'll you're gonna do fine. And and I think everyone else can agree. We'll we'll read comments and you know curate the ones that we tell Michael about. But it'll be. <laughs> It'll be it'll be a lot of fun. I th- I th- I'm really 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 excited about it. I'm really excited about it. You know, I mean, the book the book is done, and so you know, like not, done done, like copy edits, like, like on the copy edits are done. Okay, uh, it, it's I don't know what it's like for other authors, but but for me, you know, when I finish a book because I, mean, I write a lot of books, it's sort of like the project is kind of dead to me because I've moved on to a different book. Yeah, right. And then and then you know the book will come out, and people are like, you know, are you going to party? I'm like, I don't. know. I haven't thought about that book in two years. Like, oh, I'm on the three books down the road. Yeah. Um, so it's, this has actually been a, a really wild kind of feeling because I finished copy edits two weeks ago. So <laughs> like it's I'm I was I'm still in that like letting go stage. Yeah. So yeah. I can work on the next book. Yeah. And now everybody's like really intense on this yeah. thing. And I'm like. <laughs> It's like right, a, maybe I'll just stay here for yeah, a bit. A little, little bit of like, like the weight of responsibility is kind of sitting there. Yeah. 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 And yeah, there, that's very scary. Yeah. Um, that's very scary. And it, and it's, but that's something I knew going in because I knew how much this means to me and I knew how upset I would be if somebody else did this and screwed it up. Um, I was like, I would, I would be so hateful of that person. <laughs> they got the chance to do it. <laughs> And they messed it up. Like it would just break my heart, and and I don't want to break anybody else's heart. That's so I, I just tried very hard to think, you know, within the within the confines of what I've been tasked to do, and the confines of, of what the publisher has given me. <laughs> yeah. And the con, you know, and Harriet and, and Maria, Harriet, and Harriet, and you know, and, and and I do I do want to say like none of that was. Uh, Difficult, and that, and that nobody was saying you can't say this, you can't say that. It was more, um, you know, how how much space can I spend saying this? Right? <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Like I, I could write this book ten times as long as it is. Yeah. They're not gonna let me do that. No. It needs to be this length. Yeah. So all right, what can I pack in? And trying to get as much material in there um, that's not me, mm-hmm. that is Jordan. Fair. As much of it as possible. So, with no I, I, and I, no details, like I'm not yep. asking for any details, but um, it's on page forty-two. <laughs> the, the answer to everything. Okay. everything. It's, it's Nakomi that's on forty. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> that was a lie. I have no idea. I'm just pulling things out of the um, air. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Um, with no details at all, I just want to know, like, were, when you. Uh, had access to those notes and yeah. and Tom and Maria and Harriet. If you if you went to them with a question or 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 had written something that you thought you knew, uh, and it came back with information, were, were you surprised by anything? Was any did anything surprise you in this journey that you've taken for the book? Yeah, there were a couple surprises. Um, usually from the notes, yeah, there was something that uh, that I either suspected. Um, and and got got right, and I was surprised I got right. Okay, you know, like that, that I. <laughs> I mean, you know, you're like you. 
I don't know about other people, but you know, like I have this theory or whatever, and like, there's no way that's right. And then it's like, there it is in his handwriting. Oh, look at that. I guess I'm right. Like, <laughs> validation. Like, validation. And it's a cool surprise. Yeah. Uh, there were all there were also things that you know I thought one thing, and we've sort of figured out another. And it's a uh, it's a very small thing. Um, literally the last entry in the book. Mm-hmm. People can. Yeah, you're probably going to be able to figure out for that information. <laughs> but the last entry in the book, so the last words in the book, in mm-hmm. fact, are a footnote. Well, it's an end note now. They moved to end notes. But mm-hmm. there's an end note that uh, makes clear that the last entry of the book, I didn't figure out the the, the, the trick mm-hmm. that Jordan had done. Okay. Maria figured it out. <laughs> and she figured it out. And I meant to say this in the panel. I was like, oh, I'm going to tell him about that. And then things got out of hand. So, so yeah, there's the, the final entry, because the, the last part of the book is like a glossary, if you mm-hmm. will. And it's the last entry, so it's in the Zs, mm-hmm. uh, Z for those people uh, in Canada. Elsewhere. Um, and uh, we all thought, and I wrote the entry uh, one way, like, like this is where he got it from. This is not a big deal. This is not some huge reveal. It's a small thing. But, uh, and we all thought it. We all passed along. Okay, okay, okay. Everybody checked off. Good. I've moved on to other things. Yeah. One of the rounds of edits, because Maria read it four times, I think she said. Um, she suddenly emails me and she says, oh my God, I was watching Jeopardy last night. <laughs> <laughs> and she was watching Jeopardy. She likes Jeopardy, I guess. Yeah. But also Ken Jennings was hosting at that point. Ken Jennings, of course, is the former roommate of Brandon Sanderson. Yep. Unrelated to anything real time, one of the questions actually answered where and changed what we thought was in the book. And, <laughs> and it was, she writes me, she's like, I was watching Jeopardy. This question was blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh my God, that's it. Like, that's where that thing came from. Uh, the, the, the chance of this, because it was such weirdly specific information. Yeah. That how, how, how Jordan had it. How, <laughs> Dude, and, and, but yeah, that's I scratched out my note. Like, nope, that's wrong. That's wrong. We all thought it was this, um, and that was that was a cool surprise. And it and because it was Ken Jennings, and stuff, I don't know, it just felt like <laughs> yeah, weird. it was like a weird like yeah, like just, something was grasping. Yeah, it was it was wild. <laughs> there was a there was a, a bit of a Tavarin twisting of of the pattern. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I you know, I felt a lot of that right in this book because. Um, as people know who, who read the letter that I wrote um, uh, to the readers when the book was announced, mm-hmm. by an u- utterly unrelated thing, um, Harriet had given uh, uh, Jordan's writing desk to, to the Citadel where I teach. Yeah. And they, the Citadel, were like, well, hey, Mike, you, you do Jordan's stuff. Do you want us to put his writing desk in your office? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, I'll move some stuff, maybe. Yeah. Like that's all right. We can. Yeah, I'll use that one. Yeah. Sure. So. And then the door shut. Yeah. And then... <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that's my precious. <laughs> so, so yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm literally. What it was two weeks? Maybe three weeks after that desk gets put into my office. And, and uh, so I have, and the desk came with a complete set of signed hardcovers. Um, I already had the, the estate, because of, of other things I've done for the estate, um, had given me um, one of his swords. It's actually the first Dragonmark sword, <sighs> um, which is kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> Just it's, a, it's, yeah. It's a, it's a good time. It's amazing. Her- no, it's Dragonmark. Oh, okay. It's not Herodmark. Um, so, like. I think it's where he got the idea for the Herodmark. Is from that. So dragon, like English, uh, Chinese, Chinese, more. Dragon. It's the yeah. Okay, so more yeah. like the uh, the clan chief dragon yeah. type. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it's a samurai sword. It's not. Um, but that's what it was sold to him as. Mm-hmm. You know, and that was given to me right after his passing. Um, I was led into the armory. He had an armory. He has an armory. Yes. Yeah. I, I I also was lucky enough to to see the to go to the to yeah. to, to, to the. Um, what do they call it? They have a fun name. Harriet had a fun name. I'm sorry. Anyway, 
I was lucky enough to get to go to uh, uh, Jim Robert Jordan's estate as well. Yeah. Wow, I'm sorry. It was like ten years ago, and I just yeah. had like a little when it was when I remembered yeah. it was like ten years ago. But um, yeah, no, he does have an, like a legit armory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. really impressive. Yeah, and, and I had just recently given the speech inducting the South Carolina Academy of Authors, and so uh, Harriet had said, "We want you to just pick something out." <laughs> and just, um, just yeah, pick. just pick something out. And I said, "You can't have you can't have that one. You know, that's going that's going to Brandon. That's going to Will. We're saving that." What else? Oh. And I was left there, and uh, and I don't, I, I to this day, I, I, do, I don't know why. I was sitting there, and I remember, I remember the writing desk. Uh, how could it ever occur to me I would be at that desk eventually? <laughs> um, but but you know, like that was the writing desk, and I wanted to sit down. Everything was left. Everything was still just as he had left. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, I can't. I'm not. I can't sit there. I'm no, not I'm not worthy. Yeah, I'm not worthy. Of that. Um, and I'm sort of left there and there's all this stuff and I'm just like I can't you know and then for some reason it was like um, I was like in the Princess Bride when he, when he <laughs> says the, the, the prayer over his, over his sword and yeah. kind of goes around and hits the knot yeah. uh, I was like I don't like what do I, that <laughs> and, and went over and it was this unassuming uh, katana kind of over in the corner you chose and, wisely, and uh, and yeah, I, <laughs> I pulled it, and it's and it's got this dragon mark on it. I'm like, oh my god, and weirdly, like five years later, I'm in my office. I've got the sword in my office at work, and uh, one of my students, who's a veteran student who'd been in Iraq, uh, was coming in to talk about sort of what he had seen and things and experienced in Iraq. And it was really emotional talk. And um, partway through it, he looks up at the sword and he's like, that's a really cool sword. And I said, and I was kind of grateful for the emotional kind of relief because of what we've been talking about. Yeah. And I said, oh, no, that's you know, really interesting. Uh, you know, story with a guy that. named Robert Jordan, yeah. blah, blah. And he's like, we're Robert Jordan. And I was like, yeah, Robert, you know, you know his works? He's like, yeah. Um, he goes, my, my father-in-law ran a, an antique store and actually sold him a sword back in the day. And I was like, really? Is that, tr-? like, huh, what? that's cool. And he's like, yeah, yeah, no, I should like, like, did anything come with it? And I'm like, yeah, a little piece of paper came with it that was like the tag on it. Yeah. He's like, can I see it? And so I showed it to him and he's like, yeah, that was bought at my father-in-law's store. Uh, and he says, <laughs> I was like, whatever. Get the hell out of here, you're, you're making this up. Get out of here. So our conversation, go- the next day, he comes in, yeah, it was the next day, because I didn't have office hours. He just showed me, he's like, good, you're here. He's like, look, here's the receipt. Here's a picture that my <laughs> wife took because she was working the register. Yeah. And it's a picture of Robert Jordan yeah, yeah. with the sword at the register, like going like, yeah, I got the sword. <laughs> I'm like, Are you kidding me? I think, I see, see, this is not, now, I think you should feel safe in your responsibility i feel like this is a <laughs> this has got to be you know what i mean it's, like coming from so the beyond weird. here it is so weird that's um, amazing yeah uh, and you know my office because of uh you know where my office is uh, on on campus you know i look out my window and i see the white tower right i mean that what what inspired him to yeah. the white tower is, yeah. is on the campus of the citadel because uh, he also he went to the citadel yes yeah and uh, yeah, I mean, so God, I'm right. I'm writing this book at his desk with the sword, <laughs> with the saber tooth tiger skull that's in the Tenchiko Palace yeah. Museum, uh, looking out the window at the White Tower, you know, and like, uh, yeah, yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't feel real. I think if you told 13 or 15 year old Jew that that would be, yeah, yeah no, yeah, no, 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 okay. no, I was violent. I would have punched you in the face. Like, I'm a liar. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it just it's just not right in the sense that that doesn't compute. Fair enough. It doesn't make sense to me. I'm grateful <laughs> beyond words, but it's just such a bizarre set of circumstances. Um, like I said, that they, you know, Mike, would you want the desk? Yeah, <laughs> sure. You can store it in my office. Yeah. And and yeah, and then just a couple weeks later, there was a know, shrine around it. Right. right yeah. No, I'd like, I'd, Keep it all like nicely polishing the wood all the time. Like, it's a little creepy. Um, and yeah, then just a couple weeks later, that they, you know, would say, "We want you to write this book," and I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. 
to do that, like uh, with osmosis on the desk. Hopefully, <laughs> um, yeah. I, I tried when they asked me early. Uh, the cover is amazing. It's a beautiful cover. Oh, it's so cool. I'm excited. Um, oh, who did, uh, who did the cover? Do you know? Uh, oh God, I I fell out of my head. That's fine. Uh, I'm sorry. No, it's good. But it's it's a beautiful cover. And when they were talking about the cover, I was like, well, you know, I'm writing at his desk. And they're like, really? Yeah, I'm writing at his desk. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> and so I actually took I took uh, high res photos of the of the wood, because um, I was like, I said, to see if maybe they'd want to do a cover that was like. Maybe wood. with like the background or yeah, something. The yeah, background or something. They didn't go that direction, which is fine because it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. But yeah, I was just like anything, anything I could find to try and give anything I could to other people to like just try and make you feel what I was well, feeling. I, I was already writing. feel that way, and I haven't even seen it, so <laughs> oh, I, 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 I'm sold with it's it. It's good. It's. Good. I'm excited. Uh, um, all right, so. As much as we love the Wheel of Time, I, I I have to get into some of the stuff that you've done, like your things, which I'm sure, yeah. like, you know, I, 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 we could talk Wheel of Time all day, and I would love to, and I will probably, now that I have your phone number, just text you and ask you Wheel of Time questions. <laughs> I won't. I won't do that. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> just just have that as the stock just response. Like, just have that as the stock response. All right, so you have a bachelor's degree, and correct me if I get any of this wrong, a bachelor's degree in, in history, yes. a master's in medieval studies and English... Yes. And a PhD in English as well. Correct. So you just thought, you know, now nah, I'll just, just round that off there, right? You know, nah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird how all that happened. <laughs> but yeah, I, I liked school, apparently. <laughs> and then uh, you were like, hmm, I, th- I think I'll add fiction author to this as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the fiction author was what I wanted to do as a kid. Oh, fair enough. Okay. So, yeah. oh, okay. So here, real quick. What's, what started, was it a love of history that, pro- that, that poked you into fantasy? Or was it a love of fantasy that prodded you into history oh, man. and mythology? Chicken and egg. <laughs> uh, I always loved history. I, I really did. I, when I was young, uh, this is like the most nerd thing in the world, I'm sure. Uh, when I was young... Our, in our house, we had a set of encyclopedias, World mm-hmm. encyclopedias. And the, the encyclopedias, for whatever reason, the only place we had to put them was in my room. Like, when I was in kindergarten. <laughs> so, um, so, instead so they of were reading, bigger than you. <laughs> yeah, so instead of reading Dr. Seuss or whatever, I, was, I read the encyclopedias. Um, and I was like, it's apparently a series. <laughs> so, and, and it looks like... A must be the first one, <laughs> so I guess I'm going to be here a while. This is ha- So just in case any parents are watching, if you want your child to have the plethora of, of, cr- of things, just, just when you teach them the ABCs, do it through encyclopedia. Through encyclopedias. Just, and you just leave it there in the room and be like, I don't know, kid's going to get up into trouble. There you go. There's yeah. the trouble he's going to get into. Yeah. So, uh, and, you know, they're like, you, know, you need to stop reading. I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, okay. I'll the covers with the flashlight. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, so I, mean, I, I, I you know, read the encyclopedia as a kid, and I loved the history in it. I just could not get enough of that. So that was always with me. And um, and then when I was reading things like The Wheel of Time, uh, Tolkien, Wheel of Time, kind of like was like a one-two punch for me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I love this stuff. And I could see already, like, there's historical stuff in there. Like, you know, I remember that from, from the V volume, right? <laughs> um, and... And like people are probably geeking out now, trying to figure out the V. I was <laughs> made that up. All right, but <laughs> but it was the 1963 edition of the World Book. So uh, so yeah, I was I was I saw the kind of historical stuff going on in fantasy. I thought, oh, that's cool. I want to do that. And my parents were like, you can't make a living doing that. Um, those people could like right. I mean, you know, maybe you'll you'll hit it big, but dude, you should have a backup plan. And I was like, well, I like the history stuff too. Yeah. I'll be a history teacher. Mm-hmm. And are your parents still with us? Oh yeah. And so now they're amazing. Did you go back and be like, remember, <laughs> <laughs> remember what you said? <laughs> no, it's no. awesome. Yeah, and okay. I, but I it's fun them. sometimes to poke your parents. They're my parents are the. I am so blessed. They are incredibly amazing human beings. That's fantastic. Well, I mean, obviously. Oh, they're so supportive. Uh, oh, that's kind of. <laughs> that's kind of. Good. I could have turned out bad, but it was like they were so good. And uh, so like, you should have a backup plan. I'm like, all right, well, here's my plan. I'll be a history teacher because I like history. Mm-hmm. I'm like, cool. Mm-hmm. And they'll give me summers off to write my fantasy books. <laughs> and like, 
score, score, right? So this is my thing. <laughs> but then as I was as I was going through school, like in middle school and high school, I would be in my history classes and like I loved them, but I'll look around and be like, dude, I can't teach these kids. Like <laughs> we're messed up, you know? Like this age, this is not good. Uh, but when I got to college, I was like, oh, this I could do. Yeah. Like people seem to have their stuff together. Uh, people are really all here wanting to learn mostly. Uh, so yeah, I could do this. And so I was like, all right, well, you got to get a PhD and stuff. And I, and I thought I'd be a historian. I mean, I am a historian. I publish history. Yeah. But my plan was a PhD in history. Uh, but it ended up that I had some graduate classes. I was really fortunate to have the opportunity to take classes in what's called paleography, which is the ability to uh, read uh, ancient medieval manuscripts. Oh. Like read the handwriting. Yeah. Paleography. Um, and this I thought was wonderful because as a historian, you want uh, data, you want more sources. Yeah. And so much of it has been sort of not touched yet. It's just in a manuscript, in an archive, and nobody's looked at it. And I thought, well, if I have this kind of like secret little skill, I can look at that stuff. Yeah. And now I've got more, more material. Well, that's in the United States, an, an English degree thing doing paleography and editing it's mm -hmm. called so i had ended up my kind of career went there for my graduate work but what i'm doing with it never yeah. shifted which is you know i'm writing about like what happened in the past or, yeah you know, i'm doing history stuff so so that's been kind of the uh the weird process that got me to having a long <laughs> list of degrees <laughs> yeah. was, was sort of fun what do i have to do to do the things i want right which in the end is all is all i ever wanted you know just i want to be able to do what i what makes me happy and yeah. what i have a passion for and i don't I, obviously I, I love money <laughs> i think money's awesome yeah big fan yeah um it's a thing that we did that i like and i would want more uh but it's really awesome if i feel like i'm being paid and I shouldn't be. <laughs> like, like, like you're doing things that you like. I would do this for free. I would yeah. pay you to let me do this. Well, I mean, I mean, I know we're talking about something else, but go back yeah. to origins. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I'm being paid for. I'm being paid you're gonna give me a check. Like what? I feel like I should be paying you <laughs> yeah. to let me look at this stuff. Like honestly, I would have paid to do this. Yeah. It's too late. The check clear. <laughs> uh, yeah, Tom, you can't take yeah, it back. I can't take it back. <laughs> like it's done. Uh, but yeah, I mean that that that's such a cool feeling, and so. Uh, the ability to do this in my in my work is is such is such a blessing that I can I teach what I want to teach I write what I want to write and uh, not everybody can can say that they're no. so lucky. Speaking of your 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 titles, uh, and I can't remember off the top of my head, and my l dyslexia will mess up the order. But you like you have. Lovingly, you have like a title, like a plethora of titles. It's almost like Khaleesi, uh, of like it was. It's like I forgot, like, Lieutenant Colonel now. So it's like Lieutenant Colonel, Professor, Doctor. Like what is it again? <laughs> yeah. So he he doesn't like this, but but other people I, call him it. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> we could cut it out if you don't want. To. I don't know what it's all up to now. It's no. like uh, <laughs> I don't know what it's all. Lieutenant, up to Lieutenant now. Colonel, Professor. Doctor, I don't remember what it all is. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Professor Dr. Michael Livingston? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, so Hero of the horn? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just going to throw that in there just for you. Be, yeah, oh man. Put it on a t-shirt. Um, <laughs> Livingston, Hero of the horn. Uh, yeah, so I'm, you know, I'm, I have a doctorate, right? So there's yeah. a doctor. Uh, I'm a professor at the Citadel, so I'm a professor, I guess. Yeah. Uh, by virtue <laughs> of being at the Citadel on, on faculty, you, you, are, you have military titles. Mm -hmm. So I'm a lieutenant colonel. Uh, but then I'm also in my, uh, in my professional life, um, the secretary general of the United States commission, uh, for military history. Uh, and I'm on the board of the South Carolina Academy of Authors and I like a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm Mike. I, <laughs> yes. I, I, I do it. Like, <laughs> all that stuff is just. No, but it's, it's great. And like, you know, for, for, especially people, I feel like stuff like that will make, um, people that are going to come into the book see how deep your understanding of the not the wheel of time i mean but the wheel of time too but like of the source material that you're pulling to explain where this stuff came from in the wheel of time so. uh, yeah i mean I, I i hope i hope that that's good yeah. um i mean i would i would say just 
just because somebody has a has a doctorate doesn't mean they're smart. Yeah, uh, uh, I know. I mean, we've seen that in the media in the recent years for reasons. I know way too many people. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna throw anybody under the bus. No. but I know way too many people. That's for later when the camera shuts off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, obviously, if if it helps people. Uh, you know, to think, well, yeah, this apparently it's not an idiot who did it. Like, yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, it is, you know, doing that book was, um, it, it, there is some, some strange ways in which, like, it's kind of like my whole life had kind of brought me to the point mm -hmm. of being ready to do that. Um, and, and, you know, maybe that's part of why I was, you know, sort of, you know, granted this opportunity. Yeah. Um, now, real quick, uh, correct me. What is... Do, does your ser the series The Shards of Heaven and Realm of yeah. does that have a does the series itself have a title? Shards of Heaven, I think. Is, it, is it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's what yeah. I that's what I thought, but I was like, yeah. that's the first book, so I never yeah, get it. Yeah, right. yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It's not it's not got something fun. Yeah, well, it is fun. That's why I want to talk about it. So anyway, all right. So I want to talk about now. I since I'm doing this and no one can stop me, uh, I want to do. I want to. I, I want to nerd out a little bit about your series. So Shards of Heaven. Yeah, I'm not going to stop you. Yeah, okay, great. So I love that series so much. Like, it is, it is fantastic. So we talked yesterday in our little couch con about how I enjoy... Um, I really enjoy urban fantasy and historical fantasy for, like... Especially coming from... So it's great when it's just an author. Like, you know, like, stuff like that. I'm just an author. But, you know, you have a unique background in... Every, like everything that you know, a lot of people pull for information from history and 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 uh, 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 medieval history and stuff like that, and uh, the English, uh, um, where you said you were going into those documents and yeah. So, uh, but you actually have that. So you actually have those things. I mean, people can research it, but you have a unique perspective on it, and I love the way you play with it, like in your in your in your story. So, and I said yesterday, but I want to say it again because I love it. When I pitch people your book. Like when, when I'm like, when people say, oh, do you have any suggestions? I'm like, well, what do you like? And one of my first go-tos is always Shards of Heaven. And I'm like, when I try to tell people about it, like I, I don't want it to sound like crunchy, but I'm like, it's set in like Octavian's rule of, of like, you know, uh, 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 the empire. And like, you know, there's a lot of Mark Antony and Cleopatra. There's stuff going on. But also it's, he's got these fun little, like little dabs of fantasy put into it and my fav my favorite favorite one and it's like I love the story and the characters and the dialogue and everything but it was like and it's okay if I say it on camera like the uh, it's a small tiny little spoiler for it's for that early for, it's a really is an early spoiler that's why I never really feel yeah. bad about saying it because yeah. I hate spoiling things for people but Moses's staff that he uses to part the Red Sea yeah. so water is also uh, Poseidon's trident yeah. Or pieces of their, you know, I won't go into the details with that, but it's, they're similar things. Right. They're, or physically, actually the thing. Yes. So I love that so much. <laughs> I loved it. Uh, yeah, I love that you love it. Uh, <laughs> it was cool to write. Yeah. Yeah, that, that uh, Shards of Heaven was um, such a blast to write. Because like you said, this this kind of brings together everything that I, that I do. Yeah. Um, and what was really fun about it I think we were talking about this yesterday. Yeah, is that uh, I never, I never broke history. So yes. It, it, yeah, it's a fantasy. Yeah. Set in historical stuff, and I never yeah. broke the historical stuff, and 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 that was frustrating at times because if I'm uh, if I'm putting a scene into a historical place, mm -hmm. like I'm getting the archaeology, I'm getting like, how big is that doorway? Yep. Uh, how big is the room? And and that can be frustrating because like I, I want to have this action sequence do this. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't. I can't do that. So 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 your process for things like that when you're doing, entire like scenes that are, sat in history like a fight scene or something. Do you start with, the actual history and then build off of that for your story, or do you do it the other way around? Uh, sort or of, yes, sort of both, right? Yeah. Because you know, I mean, I know. Okay, you know, to use that instance, you know, we're going to go into this room and there's going to be this fight scene. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the outcome will be X, right? Mm -hmm. Like, plot-wise, that's what needs to happen for the outline. But then when it comes to writing it, now what I'm writing it is when I'm getting into the archaeology and stuff. Mm -hmm. like, okay, let me make mm -hmm. sure I nail mm -hmm. this thing. And, and then it might happen like, oh, 
man, that's not going to work, <laughs> right? And so for the story, or because you got, or you accidentally changed something. Yeah, usually because the because the the uh, physical demands of what I want to happen can't happen. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. And so and so as a result, well, it can't happen, right? Because <laughs> I can't I can't pretend that that this Egyptian palace was built differently than the way it was. Yeah. It was built that way. Yep. So if this is going to be in the history, it's got to be in the history. Uh, and so at that point, it's like, all right, well, plot wise, I'm going to have to figure out some other thing. Yeah. Uh, and it's also still going to work and work for the outline. Uh, so it's it was the whole experience of writing shards was uh, really exhilarating as as both an author and a historian. It was like both sides of my brain. Yeah. Like working in cahoots, uh, which was too much fun. And and the, the people do love it. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I am one of the people. Uh, they're my favorite people. Yay! Yeah. Um, so, uh, okay, so on that, when you said, you, like, two parts of your brain with that. So, um, when you're doing research, like, your actual research, like, you were recently in Greece, right, you said? And, yeah. like, doing, you were out in a field somewhere with Google Map satellite images <laughs> looking for things. And yeah, I was doing all kinds of so, so you But you're, that's hard research for academia. Right. Okay. Do you... Do you have to? Are you able to do both, or do do you switch one off and find? Do you keep two notebooks? Like this is my fantasy style. Like I discovered this thing I want to use in a book, so I'll write it over <laughs> here, and then I have my actual notebook. I'll write that over there. Like how? Do you differentiate from the two, or is it just they both kind of happen at the same they're time? They're both they're both there for me. Yeah, and, and it's you know somebody was asking me uh, yeah also yesterday in a different context. How you know? How am I so prolific? How do I get so much stuff done? Because I usually have a couple books coming out a year. Yeah. Uh, part of it is because I have these two different sides of self, mm -hmm. uh, and they're both working on projects. And if if one kind of I don't know what I'm doing over here, I go to the other one. <laughs> okay. Right? So uh, so it's not like a timed thing. Yeah. Like it's time to work on academic stuff. Yeah. It's like the academic stuff wants to work. Working no, on academic, academic stuff, stuff, right? But if it's like, yeah, I'm not, I still don't have my head around that battle. I'm kind of stuck, like trying to reconstruct what happened. I'm, I'm stuck. I'm missing something. I'm not right. You know, but that next scene in the novel, <laughs> I know what's going to happen there. Let me, talk Let about me open that. up that Scrivener file. Let me just go over there now. Um, oh, do you use Scrivener? Is that I do not use Scrivener. Okay. Uh, I write, this always surprises everybody. I write on my phone a lot. Um, so, like, or do you have like a stylus? Like, they're just like, yeah. Okay. So, um, very dexterous. I don't know about that. Uh, <laughs> it, it can lead to some some funny autocorrect. Uh, <laughs> in fact, in Origins, in copy it, it had gone through me and it got through all these different people, and the copier comes back on one of the things on Origins, and I had because I'd been typing and it had autocorrect instead of uh, well, it's, it said Tar Avalon, um, and I was like. Wow, how did I miss the... Wow. <laughs> Thank you, copy editor. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just the one time. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, I, I, uh, I, I use a, a program called Pages. It comes on the iPhone. Yeah. It has the iCloud uh, version. So if I'm sitting there at, at uh, Jordan's desk, uh, I've got the iCloud version, and I'm typing on the same document. It's immediately updated to my iPhone, my iPad, and, uh, and I've always got that stuff kind of with me. Cool. And so it allows me, if I've got five minutes... I could pop up whatever I'm working on, yeah. and even if it's just edit the previous paragraph I'd written, uh, or maybe I can write a little bit more. So it's kind of all there, and that also enables me to switch pretty seamlessly you between know, the two. Just, yeah, if something occurs, pop over like to ha ha. Yeah, pop over to that file, put that in, mm -hmm. write that down, pop back over here. That's cool. Because uh, I, I I'm not organized enough. <laughs> <laughs> to have two yeah. All right. I well, I, I, well, yeah. I, mean, I didn't know if maybe you had to discipline yourself. Like, stop it! I can't write that fantasy book right now. I have to get this done. Yeah. No, I don't discipline myself at all. Oh, perfect. I just let it run. I love it. Yeah. It's like that horse wants to go. Let it run. Get no, on the horse. Okay. And go as far as you can. Awesome. You also, again, I'm gonna nerd out because no one can stop me. Uh, another thing that you used to do was, uh, which I, 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 if you don't want to do it, start doing it again, like professionally, I would like if you just sent me emails on movies that you watch and correct, because you used to write those articles for not just movies, but like video games and yeah. stuff like that, that you would be like, they got this wrong. They got that wrong, that he was wearing this armor backwards. Like, you know, there was like all kinds of fun little like things. Some of it was like tongue in cheek, like not tongue in cheek, but like in, in all, all in good humor. 
But there were some times where you were like, <laughs> like I can I can almost hear you banging not Robert Jordan's desk, no, but no Robert ever. Desk, no. But like you know, your maybe your personal desks. Yeah. Uh, that the the plethora of those that you have. Um, that was fun. That was for tour.com. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I was doing doing these things where yeah, I would I would sort of take something popular in the in medieval whether it was yeah. game of thrones or, or i think you did or, um uh, uh braveheart once too right yeah 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 because yeah. well, i'm always bad talking braveheart right? yeah it's i know so i know I, th- th- those so are my bad. favorite ones it's so <laughs> there's bad. actually like almost a series just on braveheart oh, and I, just didn't, I didn't want to do it and everybody kept goading me in the comments like do braveheart do braveheart do braveheart fine uh and so i, t- I think i wrote the whole article on like the first so like three minutes in the movie or something like that. I was just like, and I'm done. <laughs> that, that, uh, we're only three minutes I'm in. Done. That's <laughs> long enough for an article. Um, yeah, it, I mean, it was fun. Yeah. And, and, and that to me is the the point of it is not to to drag the movie. No. The the point is like this is a way that I can bring people in to to you know to educate a little bit and and I, and I try to obviously have fun in doing it. Too. Yeah. Well, it comes out in the in the articles. I think that it seems like that you're that you're enjoying yourself. Oh, the, way, the way you write them, so. I am. And they're fun to do. It's I like that public outreach. Uh, but you know, the reason I kind of stopped doing them is not because I meant to stop doing them, but things like the Origins book. Yeah, yeah, of course. And and you know, in the Origins book, I, you know, I had notes that I had been gathering for years on you know the myths and the history yeah, behind yeah, yeah. Uh, real time. Um, you know, I didn't have a lot of time to actually execute the writing of the book. Fair. And so it was like, well, nothing else is getting done. Yeah. Like, it's all in on this. Yeah. And, and at this point, like there's so many book contracts that that's kind of, yeah, that'll take that's precedent fair. over that's fair. doing little articles. But, yeah. uh, but there's like, there's a new Viking movie that just came out. I gotta go see the new Viking. Oh movie. yeah. And uh, the, there's Valhalla, the show that's like follows Vikings. I don't yeah. know if you watched it. So yeah. I haven't watched that yet. Yeah, we just did a a, a podcast uh, on the Battle of Shrewsbury, mm-hmm. uh, and it came up a little bit. We're talking about. I think next week we're going to do an episode on Nine. on uh, something that has to do with the Vikings. That's Valhalla cool. Thing. That's yeah. cool. So um, I'm gonna again because no one can stop me. I'm going to give you a sh- like a shameless like like plug or suggestion or if you want to run with it, I'm just supposed to pay you for this. N- no, no. I just I want to no, like if can. if it happens <laughs> if it, if if you use it, I just want to sit okay. backstage and watch you. Okay. So ha- Neil deGrasse Tyson, yes. Yeah, obviously. I know that guy. Okay. Um, he does this thing okay. which I and I really feel like this would be amazing for you. I would watch every moment of it. Um, so he does this thing. I saw him at the Straz in Florida, uh, where he does an astrophysicist watches a movie, and the first of all, just because this was hilarious, it has nothing to do with anything. But when he walks on stage, he's in his suit and everything. Yeah. He walks on stage and takes his shoes off. That's the first thing he does when he. I was like, okay, cool, man, be comfortable, whatever, whatever you want. It was just interesting. Yeah. But like, so, but then he goes into. Like, you know, like Inception and like, you know, so yeah. gravity, he hates gravity like you hate Braveheart. Oh my God. <laughs> but, uh, has a lot of problems. so my, my shameless, my shameless plug for you is a historian watches a movie, a hit, watches the movies or a historian plays Assassin's Creed. And if it happens, just let me know. Cause I want to just sit just and watch. Wanna, I just want to watch. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. There was a, there was a, a producer at one point, uh, when I was shooting a, a, a show out in Hollywood. And and the producer was like, you know what I you know what I want to do, he's like I want to just do uh, a show where you watch Ancient Aliens. Um, <laughs> he said I, I want to just do oh, you watch God. Ancient Aliens and you're drinking. I was gonna say the, yeah. the alcohol better and be I was involved. Like, I would do it. Uh, yeah, because it yeah, there's some fun to that. Of course, I'm yeah. sure. And and and, uh, and and yeah, I would I would absolutely just. People want to pay me to sit. And I, well, to I, somebody, somebody please, that. somebody please pay him to do that because I would pay you to do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's, uh, let's do a Kickstarter. Brandon set the record. We, can, we, we, we I, can I feel like that. we can get in there. Yeah, we can beat that. The dark panel next year. Oh, Ooh. would you want to? Can, can I? Can I rope you into maybe doing like panels on some movies or video games next year? In addition to, I'm sure the Wheel of Time ones that we'll do. <laughs> 
Uh, sure. Okay, like a, a historian talks about X, we'll figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Do you play, so the, like Assassin's Creed, do you play those games or is it just like you go and watch a review of it? Or? I didn't review that without playing Are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, awesome. Nice. Yeah. Um, wait, yeah. wait, so, so, all right, all right. So then again, let's nerd out a little bit. Um, Assassin's Creed, w like where did you start in playing those? Like back in the first one, Xbox 360 or like? No, I started with Black Flag. Okay, Black Flag was great. Uh, I yeah. started with Black Flag, then I, after I beat that, I went back and tried a couple of the other ones, but I was just annoyed at them. Yeah. Uh, and so then I did, then I did uh, Origins, Origins, Odyssey, and yeah, Valhalla. Odyssey and Valhalla. Yeah. The, so uh, I, I, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm excited now because, so Black Flag was great. Uh, like gameplay wise, mechanical wise, but that's not why we're here. Yeah. Uh, it was great, but uh, from a, hist a history perspective, obviously none of it. But like, is there the over the overarching story um, where they tie in like you know the Greek uh, things <laughs> and it's also ancient aliens too? I guess at this yeah. point, right? Yeah, yeah it so. is. <laughs> Weird. Is there do they, do they do a good job trying to marry those things and like where it's like. Not obviously, it's not plausible, but like it, where it's like, oh yeah, maybe that's cute. Like or what? I mythologically, it's a mess. No, um, gotcha. Yeah, mythologically, it's a mess. But what I love about those games is where they do get the details right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, like there's anything in particular. Or? Well, I was, I was gonna use Alexandria, so I, I think I, I think I wrote an article about it, but. Uh, the ancient Alexandria mm -hmm. that that uh, Assassin's Creed Origins takes place in, yeah. much of much of the game takes mm -hmm. place. In. You know when I when that came out, I had just done Shards of Heaven, mm -hmm. and I had reconstructed ancient Alexandria, and and like man, I've got stuff like all these scenes, yeah, these yeah, chapters, yeah. all this stuff in ancient Alexandria, and then to see how they depicted it, yeah, and the level of things they got right was so amazing to me like there were there were things they got wrong but man they got a lot of stuff right okay uh like they totally screwed up where alexander's tomb is ah oh, what are you guys doing we have we have we it. know where it is we know where <laughs> yeah. we have it what did you do but at the same time like the, the library is great what they do with the library the way that the lighthouse was great i you know just i i i felt like like I hadn't been given them enough credit for the kind of work that they're doing on the back end. Yeah. Um, one of them I tried to play, and I, I didn't like the gameplay, so I stopped, but it was in Paris. Okay, um, yeah, that was one of the earlier ones. Yeah, it was an earlier yeah. one in Paris. Uh, look, I, I couldn't see a steeple wrong in the thing. Like, yeah. it was... Wow. Oh yeah, the, like the architecture and the the yeah. art in those games is beautiful. Even though the gameplay in some of the other ones was, uh, the art is beautiful. Yeah, yeah, and is and, is and accurate. Very, very accurate. Okay, you know, you're like, yeah, that 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 is where that door is. Like, <laughs> really, really spectacular. So, so there's a lot of stuff they they do great. Um, yeah, it, it can get a little carried away, mm -hmm. uh, but it's a game. Yeah. It's a game, and and the level to which they get things right, I, I don't know if this is because I got uh, low expectations or something. But well, I mean, it's a video game. How much? Yeah, you know? it over it, that overweighs what they're getting wrong to me. Is the yeah. stuff they're getting right? That's great. And then it's you know it's up to the rest of us. Then, if you if you're interested in, in medieval warfare, because you played this video game, great, great, you'll come to my class. I'll tell you all the stuff it did wrong. Yeah. And why I know that, and we'll learn something that way. That's awesome. But you're you're never going to learn that if you're not inspired in the first place. Yeah. And these things inspire you. So exactly. Bring it on. That's I, that's what I, I and I love that. Even I love if that. It's Braveheart. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I could I sense I I could feel the venom. It was I could, hard for me to say it. I could feel the venom. It was hard for me to say it. I said it. I said it. Uh, I stick by it. Um. So. All right. Hold on. Mm -hmm. So oh, okay, so now we can add gamer to your to your to your uh, plethora of titles oh, as well. <laughs> I'd be careful with that. Though. Gamers are gamers are like that's special stuff. I can't do that. I don't have enough. Uh, I'm, what's your achievement? What, what's your achievement progress on those games? <laughs> on the, well, on, on Assassin's Creed, I always I always want to beat the game. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I beat the game. Um, but uh, but but yeah. Beyond that, it's like I, I do that. I play Fortnite. 
Uh, I play Fortnite because my son, and now my daughter, oh. love playing Fortnite. And so, um, you know, it's like a like a bonding. It's experience. bonding, yeah. Why not? Know. It's yeah, kind of fun, you know, it's like, great. It sounds weird. Like we're we're bonding over killing strangers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wait, that's that's the tagline for the show now. They're avatars. I hope. Um, yeah, so uh, you know, I mean, I do stuff like that, but, yeah. but I don't have a lot of time. Yeah, obviously, to it's, be to be doing too much stuff. Yeah, well, I, like, when you talk, you know, you so so you're very capable of just pick up experience, put back down, yeah. pick up, and it's with your writing and research. You yeah. bounce from thing to thing. When where the following, what do, what do people say on, on the interwebs now that they, the ch- the kids following the dopamine? <laughs> dopamine. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, well, I'm following the the productivity and, and that too. Yeah, and the. You know, the video game stuff, what I do of that, uh, you know, then when I'm kind of chilling with the kids. Yeah. Uh, if I'm doing something for myself, it's it's usually as a way um, to reset so I don't burn out. That's because if, if I was just, you know, constantly just pounding on the words, and I didn't, I didn't used to know this about myself. I wasn't mm-hmm. self-aware. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I would burn out. And so uh, my wife, you know, God bless her, who's a saint beyond all reckoning because she likes me <laughs> uh she she's she's like no you you have to stop you you have to stop go go play a video game <laughs> i must be one of the only people whose wife's like go play a video go game. play a video go game. play a video game mike money. please yeah, just go play a video game just like <laughs> so i mean like you know she bought me uh valhalla when i came out no um, i had been cool. going i oh, can't remember how many months straight on on uh on a couple books and uh, she knew it was coming out and and yeah she bought it and I had just gotten one book turned in, and uh, and I came in, and it was sitting on the table. It's House of the Carvel Hall. She says, she says, you're not going to do anything else this weekend. Mm-hmm. You're, that's you're a, playing that game. This, like, I, have a, I, have a requ- I have a job for you. Yeah, and I'm like, okay. Uh, and I, I mean, I played it, you know, like, no. No. No, don't no, make no. me play a video game. Uh, okay. <laughs> and then I played the video game. So, uh, so yeah, but I was like, I'm going to write an article about it. Like, that was my, yeah. you know. I'll tell you. Yeah, this is right. this is how I, I will, I'll feel that I'm being responsible. Still. Right, right. So I can like I can tell myself that. Um, yeah, no, it's about out. I'm not. Uh, my students are all gamers. Yeah, and they see everything through that lens. Well, it's great. See, I mean, like pure happenstance. Well, not really, but like you do enjoy it too. But it's a gr- that's a great tool to to like you can grab you can like grab their mind with with just speaking it just. Been saying, yeah, when I was playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla, I did. Why do you play games? And now it's like, yeah, you, know, you it can gra- it'll grab some people that you might not have, and that's yeah. great. Yeah, I mean, because they're all like, 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 look, Professor Livingston's old. Right? <laughs> they're like, you know what the internet is? Like, yeah, I know what the internet is. Wait, you know how to use a controller? Like, <laughs> like yeah, check me out. Yeah. Uh, I'm always giving them a hard time, of course, you know, telling them, like, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd really destroy you in Call of Duty or something like that. <laughs> it's a dirty lie. I wouldn't. I'd be t- uh, do you feel uh, uh, a more? Uh, do you get the same depth experiencing the, like like through the games, or or do you like to like go back and like you know could could you get that same experience reading in the? Yeah, it's one of the great things. And about ha- and, and then attaching to your with your students. Yeah, and, and you know with you know so take it to my students' perspective, yeah. the the fact that playing a, a video game. Um, they can sort of feel immersed in the world. Yeah. You know, especially something like Assassin's Creed. Have you ever used it as like a teaching tool? Like, hey, play the sixth level or, I, you know, I, I get to this village. I, I wish I could. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, not everyone has the... Right, yeah. not everybody has it. And, yeah. and so you always have to be... You know, yeah, watch this on professor. Twitch. Right, you know, of, of you know, what people can access because yeah. you don't have to be... You know, sensitive to to their financial. Yeah, you don't want to get, gatekeep something accidentally. Right, or, right, that's not okay. But, yeah. but certainly as a reference point... That, that they have, you know, if they've played Skyrim, mm-hmm. which at this point, like, it's getting pretty universal. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's only came out of 12 times. Yeah, right. So I'm like, you know, if you played Skyrim, you know, remember how there was this kind of thing. And, and even if, okay, they didn't play Skyrim, they played something kind of like that. And, and anything I can do that way that helps them get into the mindset of I'm, I'm in a world. Mm-hmm. Because when, we're, when we think about going to the past, I mean, yes, the, the the past is is our past, right? It's it's us to some degree. Yeah. But the the gap between us and and, and them is enormous. Yeah. It's truly a different world. 
And so I have to spend a lot of time almost like kind of like deprogramming. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I was actually going to ask that. Uh, do you find, so we talked about how like, you know, you mentioned that you stay true to the history when you're doing things. And yeah. do you, have you ever had to like, where you've written something either in a book, like in a fictional book or an academic, well, I'm sure in academia, there's a lot of back and forth with doctors and stuff like that. Oh no, this or that. But have you ever done something in like, or seen a question or a comment come in from your fictional stuff, yeah. like Shards of Heaven, where you wrote something that is true to history in your book and someone thought that you made it up, like this isn't real, and they tried to like, um, actually, or something Oh, like yeah. That. yeah, well, I get that on Twitter, uh, <laughs> which is, well, I mean, Twitter is, you know. Well, that is where it comes from, generally. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's happened a few times where somebody was like, you know, well, let me tell you how this worked. Uh, and, and it's usually fun because I'm not the one who has to usually kind of like push back on that. Yeah. Usually somebody else. Will so come the fans like, will. Somebody else will come yeah. and be like, "Do you know? Do you know who he is?" Like, like and I don't. That is Lieutenant Colonel, Doctor, <laughs> yeah, Professor, yeah, I don't, I don't, Hero of the Horn. Yeah, Hero of the Horn. My God. Um, by the way, I, you know, I, I, I don't want to throw that kind of weight around. I don't think. That's no, okay. no, of course. Um, you know, especially because I don't, I don't think that what I do is something that should be contained. Um, you know, sort of, sort of in a gatekeeping sense, yeah. right? You don't have to have a PhD to do what I do. Yeah. Um, you, you, you don't. My PhD doesn't mean I'm smart. It doesn't mean I'm better than. It just, it's just a thing I did yeah. uh, along the way. And it's a credential, like, big deal. Sometimes um, you need to get those certifications to get, yeah. to, to get a different uh, decimal point. On, yeah, on, on I mean, to get a job as a professor, I had to have this cert. And so you, I got this cert. So you got this cert. Okay. But this cert is not me. Uh, but at, at the same time, I will say that something like some rando on Twitter being like, well, you don't know how the crazy worked. I'm like, I actually, I was there. Yeah, like, like I went to the site. Yeah, like, I, here's my distinguished book award for that. <laughs> um, but, uh, but I could be wrong too. But, yeah, of course. Uh, you know, one of the things I come back to again and again and again in my work is, um, I have no interest, like none in being right. I have no interest in being right. My interest is getting it right. Okay. And that is a totally different... It is absolutely a totally different So if, if, if somebody can prove something I have argued to be incorrect... Is that exciting? Yes. Yeah. Because it means... Cool. There's like, more. There's more, yeah. right? It, you know, he, somebody proving me correct is... I mean, that's, I mean it's gratifying. It's, yeah. It doesn't suck, right? Yeah. But it's also like, well... I mean, yeah, yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what I thought, yeah, right? Okay. So, cool, okay, thanks. So, right. Yeah, but when it's wrong, it's like, oh, where did I get it? Like, and then, like yeah, where did I get it wrong? Yeah, How nah, did I get it wrong? Now you have the serial killer wall with the with the lines of yeah, yarn going from place yeah, to place. Yeah, so now how do I explain it? So, yeah. so, so yeah, there's there's a sense I, I can't speak for other academics, but yeah. maybe some people are really egotistically involved in it, but 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 not for me. I just I just want to get the get the facts right. I want to get the story right. That does come through. I'm sorry, I, like in in everything. That I've seen you do, okay. that that comes through. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. It's going to be you know, the same thing with, with Origins. I mean, if we find out later on... We got uh, something wrong. You know, I got something wrong. There was a floppy disk stuck in the... Yeah. Oh, and you know what's going to happen? You have to uh, be careful, but I feel like you have to check the desk for national treasure type compartments. <laughs> maybe we get, maybe get Nicolas Cage come in and look around. That face says... Or uh, that face says they're... <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> the the desk to be moved was dismantled. Okay. I'm not completely right, but like yeah, yeah. Into legs. Yeah, size. it's a it's a large antique oak writing desk, roll okay. top writing desk. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful. I think I think uh, I think Tor.com wrote a, uh, had a picture of it. Okay. With the uh, with the letter announcing things. So so it came in these kind of pieces. All right. And so I had to assemble it, and I may have poked around in assembling it. Yeah. Uh, I did find a couple things, but nothing that changed anything. Yeah. So just, it would have been nice if it was, yeah. but it was just like, oh my god. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, when was the last time this was seen? Uh, but but it wasn't anything like Nicholas uh, Cage didn't show up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It wasn't like I found a little thing and opened a deal, and it's like, no, yeah. who really killed Osmodian? Like that's not. <laughs> yeah. That's not a thing that happened. That's so, great. That's that's would have been awesome. <laughs> yeah, I tried. Honestly, I yeah. tried. I was yeah. like, Come on. We would be remiss if we didn't mention Amazon Prime TV's The Wheel of Time TV adaptation. Yeah. So, as a Wheel of Time expert, 
okay. the hat for a minute. Okay. We'll put the historian one back on in a second. Right on. Just character portrayals. Um, you know, it, it, we'll start with that. Character portrayals. Is there is there one that you really loved? I mean, obviously they changed things. I'm not saying did they get it right by the books. We already talked about that to death. I'm saying something maybe that you enjoyed or was like you know a change that it was like oh and then also things you were like meh. I loved Nine Eve. Me too. I loved Nine Eve. Me too. Um, the casting was fantastic. Her portrayal was fantastic. Um, yeah, there are things I guess. You know, if I was in the writers' room, I would have made other suggestions. No. But on a kind of characterization level, uh, I thought I thought she was just perfect. Me too. And um, you know, Nine Eve is a character. I, I read the the little excerpt, which isn't all that I have about yeah. Nine Eve in the book. Um, I did read the excerpt of the glossary I have for Nine Eve. And I, in the course of writing Origins, I got a very different perspective on Nine Eve than I had. Okay. And then watching the portrayal that we got yeah. felt just like perfect then. Oh. Um, so so I, I was I was very, very pleased with her. I mean, that, that's no offense to the rest of the cast. Yeah. I think everybody did a terrific job. I, uh, Daniel Hennessy's land, I, th I thought was was terrific. Henny. Uh, oh, Daniel Henny. Sorry, yeah, you're good. Uh, Hennessy's over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah that is. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to say it again, we can yeah. edit it. So uh, Daniel Daniel Henny's uh, land was fantastic. Yeah, I was very very. He pleased. also has a great butt. I'm just gonna say he has a great butt. Yeah, from that from the from the bath scene. I'm I'm not gonna make a professional comment. I will for both of us. It's fine. He has a great butt. <laughs> Uh, as an expert on the Wheel of Time, that is... <laughs> so fine I, feel, I, fine feel, I, I feel like I feel like Lan also probably had a decent a posterior, so I, I feel like... There's notes on that. Canonically, okay. 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 it's There's correct. No There's no notes uh, on that? There's no notes on that. Uh, there are now. <laughs> <laughs> Canon! <laughs> you gotta watch out! <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, uh, yeah, so... Yeah, I, I, I loved some of the casting. Yeah. I really did. And I'm, I'm very pleased... I'm pleased that the movie, the, the series, like, yeah. I always want to say movie, yeah. that the series... It felt like a movie, like well, even was, almost each episode yeah, it felt like that kind of that travel. Good arcs. Yeah. It, 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 I'm so glad it exists and it's bringing Me too. people to the Wheel of Time. Me too. That, and, 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 you know, I want to say also just to, to all of you, like all of our fans, like it has been such a... I was worried when they first announced it. Like I'm, I'm old. So, like, we've been doing this since, like, GeoCities websites, like, you know, when uh, uh, ageoflegends.net and stuff like that. But, like, I was a little worried that the toxicity sure. is going to also come out. It has been, and this is to you guys, it has been a breath of fresh air to see how welcoming everyone has been. Because I was, and we did see it, we did see it, but people stomped down on it pre pretty quickly, yeah. where it was like, you know, we're gonna get these fans that are only fans of the show, or they're coming to the books through the show, and they're not gonna be quality fans. And there was like a couple of, of those, but it wasn't as nearly as bad as it was for like, things like comic book series and yeah. stuff like that, where it's like, you're not a true comic fan, yeah, you only watch yeah. the movies. The gatekeepingness of that was minuscule and it was so great to see that. So I just want to congratulate no, the, the I, fans for that it's, because it's, it's been great. Because yeah, that, that talks, there's no place for that. No. There's no place for that. There's Here, no, Dragon happy. Mount, Jordan Con, there's no place for that anywhere. Yeah. So do, if, you, if you're one of those people, just don't come. <laughs> I don't think. Uh, yeah, it's, we should all just be happy that, yeah. that it exists. And, and, and you can have your own opinions about it. Yeah. Uh, you know. Uh, I, it's, opinions are fine. It's the gatekeeping that I yeah, don't like. it's not okay. Yeah, or or like the litmus test that you try to give other people for for where you came from or your or your level of fandom. Uh, that's the part I don't like. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I mean you can hate everything that I love within the wheel of time. That's fine, and we'll talk about it. But like, it's the it's the part where you start to try to label others and like yeah. put the put give them quizzes that I don't like. So back to Nine Eve real quick. Um, uh -oh. uh, uh, uh -oh. <laughs> I mean you can if you need to, but. Or me, or Maria, me, because you might not know the answer to this. Um, there was a there was a bit that they I don't want to say changed, but built on in that first episode, in the first moments that we meet her, that I loved. Like I absolutely loved the way they did it more than uh, the way it was portrayed in the books. And I'll I I feel a little dirty for saying that, but it, uh, not really, because Rafe is a genius, and the other writers and directors and the actors. But uh, 
when Nynaeve and the other women of the women's circle were braiding Egwene's hair, she said something like, I don't remember the exact words, people will correct me in the comments. Uh, uh, you know, it, when, you, to, when you feel this braid, when you, when you hold this braid, think of the other women that came before you and think of this and, you know, our strength, our knowledge, we're with you. So it kind of gave meaning to the whole braid tugging thing, kind of like ancillary through that. And um, as a, you know, as a 16 year old boy, when I was reading it, you know, like, or wow, no, I wasn't 16. I was like 13. Like as a 13 year old boy, when I was reading 90 for the first time, it, I was, you know, the same kind of stock idiot, you know, boy, you know, ah, she's petulant, pulling her hair all the time. You know, she's always like, fright. but uh, and they do kind of allude to the meaning behind it, but I really feel like they set that boom right in the beginning. You know, they yeah. gave it like a deep meaning. Is that something? So my question is not just a comment on it. Uh, 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 is that something that may have came from like the notes, or is that completely a uniquely uh, Amazon Rafe writers thing? Uh, I mean, yeah, he'd be the based man on your knowledge. Yeah, yeah, he'd be the man. Did you better. see that come across the notes at all, or something like that? Not in that specificity, no. Okay. Um, what what Nynaeve is doing, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. But but as far as I know, um, nobody in that writer's room had access to the material I had. Fair. Um, now, if, if if they if they want me to suggest anything as a result, yes, yes. Uh, pal means let me know. <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe make those battles work really good. Um, <laughs> But uh, there's some big ones coming up. There's some big ones coming up. And I, <laughs> I might know a guy. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't think I don't think they were operating on that level. Okay. But you know the people that were in that writing room clearly are very sensitive to the innate structures of, of what is going on in the wheel of time. Yeah. And, and that's a great example of something where they've they've kind of short circuited. Yeah. Um, to get things across, because you have to do that. We, with visual media, yeah. Right, with visual media, we have to do this. And so, well, here's a little shortcut to just make that in this tight way. Yeah, and, and that's in one second, like it was yeah. like three second line, yeah. It's a markup brilliance, and and I love things like that, you know. And, and, and it's gratifying to see that and to hear then somebody uh, such as yourself picking up on that, right, and picking up on that, and I, I know why they did that. Yeah. I know why they did that. That's that to me is is terrific writing. Yeah, um, and, and I think there was yeah, they, and I do all the time. I'm I don't know if you've seen the the joke that goes around is the Amazon shill for for like a lot yeah, of these. Yeah, those little ribbons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The paid Amazon shill. We're unpaid Amazon shills. It's just we're a giant freaking nerds, and <laughs> we really do. Because you got to pay for Amazon Prime. <laughs> it, it's right? true. So, yes, yeah. I do. We don't get that. We yeah. get we get nothing from Amazon, and not that I'm complaining about that. I just want. I, I'm saying that to, to, to just validate that we're just giant nerds and this is how much we love it. Yeah. And I'm not, like, we've, and we've spoken about it, we don't have to go into it now, but, like, we, I, there's videos where we talk about the things that we don't like as well. So, yeah. it's, they're there, there's not that many of them, but that's because there's not that much that I really didn't that's like. Good. Yeah, but, yeah, that's good. But, no, that's, that's cool. So, so th there was no notes of, you know, Nynaeve kicking Egwene into a river or anything? Is that? Nope, <laughs> no, that's, yeah, nothing that in the notes. I mean, you know, there was, the, away. Yeah, there was the whole, there was the whole, you know, like tie to how women channel type thing in there, you know, the banks of the river and flowing down and surrendering and stuff. Yep. But it was, it was, you know, it was fun. I, I like the way they did that. So I did, I did too. I, uh, I would have liked, uh, if, if there was, if it was a little bit more apparent, the metaphor, mm -hmm. um, I felt like that was a metaphor that, uh, that some of us got, mm -hmm. a lot of people didn't get. Yeah. Uh, and, but I was, I remember kind of when I was rewatching that episode, like, well, but how would I have made that metaphor more clear? And, and cause it's a beautiful metaphor. Yeah, it was. Right. That's, it, that st it stood out to me for like the whole se the whole first season, like yeah. that, that, that scene particularly. Yeah, this is what, this is what, we, what she was doing, what yeah. she was learning. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they, the, the writers there are. Fantastic. Speaking of the writers there and your opinions of them, if you could just, if it was somehow possible for them to see this right now and you could give one piece of advice for like knowing that you, for, uh, of the notes and the extensive, you know, expert knowledge that you have now of the Wheel of Time, on a future scene, if there was one thing you could say, hey, make sure, what would it be? And if you don't want to Raffo. say it, you don't have to. Raffo, perfect. <laughs> for to them. <laughs> 
To them. Uh, oh, Rafa. to them. To them, Rafa. Well, but y'all are here. So, yeah. um, no, the, 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 there, there is... The Without, you don't even stuff. have to be as specific either. The, the mythology and the history was the point. Like, like, that's what this was about. And the more that can be done to make that visually apparent, the better. Okay. Uh, I, I do feel like that's a huge missed opportunity if we're not using this visual medium to help people understand why what, why like what is really happening here this isn't just a, a rote fantasy mm -hmm. secondary thing like there's this whole other layer of material happening like an onion yeah and, <laughs> and this is such a per visual is so perfect for this and, and it can be done so easily yeah. like just little nips set and design there. and armor yeah. and clothing and, yeah, and uh, accessories stuff, yeah you know? and, and, and I think uh, it was, it's one of those things I was hoping that we would see more of already mm -hmm. So I would I would hope that that they would kind of expand more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And also that they'd get a good uh, warfare person. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I think they're they, they may be getting an email in the future. Um. <laughs> uh. Is there any so but, but last last uh, TV show? Um. Is there any particular scene that like stood out that you were like oh I loved that that was so cool to because we've never seen it you know like visually seen any of the things was there any particular scene character uh, weapon clothing set. That was like, oh, that was so cool to see, like, or anything like that. The, uh, yeah, the thing that I that that I had that kind of most like kind of <laughs> thrilling moment for. Yeah. Uh, was honestly when Moraine first walks into the inn. There was so, and I, I her mean, boots. It was her boots, wasn't it? It was her boots. <laughs> it like, was. I mean, just that's not how I visualized that at all. Okay. It was not like to headcanon, not right. Mm -hmm. Didn't matter. Yeah. No. Like it didn't. Matter. No, it was like so well framed. Uh, the score was good. Mm -hmm. Like just everything kind of came together there, and and the way that that she portrayed that that watchfulness and the the, the implied kind of danger. I mean, it just it was it felt really really good. It mm -hmm. was well. It was in its early, and I just everyone, I was like, all right, this is gonna be fine. Yeah, <laughs> we're good. You know, we're good. It's gonna be fine. We're good. Even if even if you know this, I don't feel like that's where. We're gonna be fine. Uh, and I and I just I felt a real thrill at that. That's I did. great. I did. I I a uh, shameless uh, 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 plug there uh, here. Um, so I got to uh, they did a live Q and A, uh, Rafe and and Rosamond, and um, they were taking like comments and, and 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 questions from from the from chat, and I threw something out there, and it is absolutely hundred percent true. Um, she has like. You know, everyone has their own headcanon who they build, like when they read the characters, who they see when they're reading. Rosamond has replaced my headcanon Wheel of Time when I, even when I read the books now. Really? She is Moiraine. And Moiraine has always been m my favorite character from the beginning. Because I was always interested in like, you know, she's like the, the tropic uh, uh, hero, hero journey. She's the teacher. She's Gandalf. So like, right? Like, like am I right with that? Like, I'm... Yeah, she's Bravo. okay. Well, the, I mean, like that's kind of what she is, you know. What I mean, like, or at least that's how I think as a complete layman, uh, and that's what like made me really interested. She's Obi Wan Kenobi. Like that was that was how I saw it as a kid, and and I immediately you know loved that about her. And now it's Rosamond in my head. And I said that to her, and like I was like, you are Moraine to me now. When I read the books, you are Moraine. And she was like, oh my god, that's so amazing. That's Thank awesome. you. And I was like, ah! <laughs> anyway, that's awesome. Um, all right, so Michael. Thank you so much. I think I can speak for the entirety of Dragon Mount for everyone else. Thanks. This has been amazing, Thanks. but make sure to go check out Shards of Heaven. The second book is Gates of Hell, and then the final one. Is Realms it the final? God. Is it the final? Uh, so far. I want more. I'm sorry. Okay, so the final one is the Realms of God, and just absolutely amazing. I love them. I will shamelessly tell everybody to read them always. Thanks. And then, obviously... Origins of the Wheel of Time, uh, November eighth, I think, or eleventh. Yeah, November eighth. November. So November eighth. Yeah. Pre-order now. Where are we pre-ordering from? Pre-order wherever you want. Wherever you wherever want. Fine books are sold. Wherever fine books are sold. Thank you for coming, You're and I will uh, somehow harangue you into more of these in the future. Happy to do it. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us and watching this interview. That was Michael Livingston. He is an author, a scholar, a professor, a PhD. He even has some uh, film credits to his name. Go and check out his stuff on Amazon, on his personal website. 
which will be linked down below this video. Thanks everybody and we'll see you next time. And that's our show. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, please subscribe, hit the like button, give us a thumbs up, or leave us a comment. We love comments, especially positive ones. And if you have any friends that are interested in the Wheel of Time, please share some of our videos with them. And as always, a huge thank you to our sponsor, Tor Books, as well as our amazing Patreon community. And if you are interested in learning about how more of this show was made or some Wheel of Time insights, you too can become a member of the Patreon community. And as always, follow us on Dragon Mount with social media. And thank you so much for watching.